Thank you very much, uh, Raja Bisheki, and uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for, uh, for, for for allowing me to express my views on the ancient Indian knowledge system uh, in this August forum. Aap sabhi ko namaskar. The India was a very rich country that we all are aware. How rich it was. Uh, Professor Angus Medicine had uh, given some figures. Professor Angus Medicine is basically worldwide known as a uh, economist, and he has acceptability world over. He wrote few books like uh, uh, Millennium Perspective of uh, World Economy or History of World Economics, etc. Then, with proper testimonials and proper proof, he had shown. how the entire world trade was from last 2000 years and which country has how much share in that entire trade therein he had shown that in the first century indian contribution or indian share in the world trade was around 1/3 22.8% almost in the first century when we reach to the 10th century it slightly dropped 1 or 2% About thirty percent, but still we were number one in the world. Then again, after the invasion of uh, the Islam Islamic uh, invaders, little it was declined, but still we maintained around twenty seven percent, twenty eight percent till the Britishers have come to India. The entire uh, the fifteen hundred years almost from first century, and prior to that we are I mean. Professor Angus Medicine not given the figures, but even prior to that, before Christ, also we had a major share of the world market, and that's why we were a real rich country in the world. Now, in the entire whatever the figures we do have, in this entire sphere of around one thousand five hundred years, the major share of Indian export was textile. Since beginning, around more than one third of the total exports were from the textile and indian textiles were really known to the world from west of india and from east of india from west of india it used to go up to italy and the europe they generally used to say that there are two countries and uh, two cities in italy which were really become rich because they were doing the direct trade with the india one was uh, venice and one other port was there in the west coast of italy and that's how the indian trade was there and as i said the main chunk was the textile the garments the fabric and now therein as we have seen that before christ around 700 years 800 years 1000 years before the christ whatever the figures we do have whatever the testimonials we do have therein it is clearly known it is clearly seen that world over there was a craze for having the indian garments for example these days if someone is wearing the armani suit we said okay he has some status so those days wearing the indian clothes or wearing the indian garments was a status symbol worldwide and indian textile was such expensive that only the kings and only that kind of uh, status or standard people used to wear that because uh, there was some some fine cloth which was very expensive in that and that was a tradition for as regards to uh, india's concern now in india this textile uh, when we see that from 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 where this uh, textile has really come on when this this was introduced in india or this this come to india 
way back we can uh, read this in rugved in rugved the second mandal there are mandals various mandals in the second mandal rushi grutmad it is mentioned that rushi grutmad had planted the cotton seed and from that the cotton tree was there and from the cotton tree he got the cotton and from the cotton using the wooden spindle he created the thread the rod thread was called tantu they mentioned tantu in rugved and then from tantu they used to make with proper weaving the proper garment cloth this means that this is from rugved and we all are aware that rugved is the one of the oldest book in the world not one of those probably the oldest book in the world probably 5000 6000 you know 6 7000 years old tradition is there with the uh with this uh, uh rugveda now we have the tradition from the rugveda onwards and therein at various points we see that the there is a mention about the fine super quality of indian textile everywhere and not only a super weaving quality we do have we also had the technology of 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 dyeing this means that coloring the normal garment normal fabric that technology so we had is thousands of years back and that's how we had this and and because of that i mean it was the only india which had rather educated the world that how to wear a cotton garment a cotton textile world was not aware about it so it was only indians who have taught the world that how the garment could be manufactured from the cotton so the stanley wilford uh, Wil, uh, wilford is a uh, you know in university of california and uh, he had and and he had uh, stanley wilford uh, is a head of uh, history department in california he writes and i quote indian textile industry is very old india was the home of cotton textile cotton clothes were introduced by india to the world that was the dr stanley wolpert from university of california head of history department that's what he guys professor dp singhal has a nice book on this topic and uh, he writes that spinning wheel was a gift to the world by india because that was a technology this spinning wheel this spindles that's how the uh, could be created from the cotton and from the thread how a weaving could be done let's imagine that since more than 2000 years back 3000 years back when the world didn't have a, a even no, normal proper technologies we had the technology of weaving the yarn creating the yarn and even coloring it and making it a very uh, kind of usable garment and that's what we used to wear that and we used to export that in many countries across the globe as i said there were i mean there are a lot of excavation uh, projects worldwide one of the excavation i mean which the largest excavation uh, project worldwide if someone asked and that is the berenica project in egypt this berenica project is uh, it was started in 1996 and with some gaps still it's it's basically going on this berenica project when they did that uh, excavation they found that a kind of a uh, box wooden box wherein they found black paper and black paper was that time available only in india that was also southern part of indian kerala in addition to that that box contained cloth the cloth with indian boutique uh, you know prints and all so colored indian boutique uh, 
print cloth was discovered or, or was found in that Veronica project. And when they did the carbon dating of that, they found that it was in the first century between the year 20 to 85. Between these 15 years, this was uh, basically manufactured or made. So this means that Indian uh, export to the Egypt and Bernica was uh, those days uh, was a major port. So there was a major route. I mean, Silk Route was one, and this used they used call it as a spice route. So across the sea from the southern tip of India, the, from Kerala, the ships used to go from Kerala to this Egypt Strait, and from Egypt they used to go to the Europe. That was basically the route. So this was the spice route, and that was the silk route. To that, the major Indian textile was imported world over. This was the best way of talking. In the east, from Java and Japan also, to Japan, China, Java, Japan, all these areas, this Indian textile, Indian garments had a major demand. One more important thing related to the Indian textile, that was the kind of fine, super fine quality of it. And that's, I think, I, I, I suppose that's a very much important factor. We Indians do have a super fine quality of all material, all material. I mean, there are a lot of examples we could give. Even like, for example, as I said that, expecting this uh, zinc, which during the Corona days, we talk a lot about the zinc. It was a technology. It was a, it, it, was, it was, those days, it was, it was a marvel. Because expecting zinc in a, such a high temperature and just cooling it for only a few degrees and then expecting the zinc was a major technology. We had that. And that too also 1000 years, 2000 years back. And which world was not aware about it till 1750 about zinc. That's as an example. Similarly, in every aspect, in every good which we use to export, Every good which we use to manufacture, including the steel, including the textile, including the spices, including everything, we had the quality, the quality standards, a super fine quality and perfection. That's very, very important. We were the perfectionist people. Somehow, after the Islamic invaders have come to India, this perfectionist image could not really stand with India. That was unfortunate part of it. But prior to that, we Indians were really known in the world as a perfectionist people. And that's the reason we ruled the world trade not for few, 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 few hundred years, but rather few thousand years. We, we literally, uh, you know, uh, had the major share in the world market, around one third. Textile is one of the major examples. Therein, the thread count is very important. Thread count is basically in a one, one square inch or one square centimeter. How many threads are there? That basically defines the quality, the super fineness of that cloth. And very fine uh, threads, because if the thread is very fine, then only we can have a more number of threads into that one square inch or one square centimeter of uh, a textile or of, 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 of a, you know, uh, cotton sheet or something. So very fine threads can produce higher thread count with one ply cotton sheet. One ply cotton sheet. The thickness of cotton fiber limits the maximum thread count to 1600. That's what generally even today science says. But the thread count which we have, rather, Sir Joseph Beck, he wrote in his uh, book that about the uh, this uh, Muslim cloth. Muslim cloth is basically malmal, we used to call it. That malmal cloth, cloth having the thread count as 2425. Let's understand. The super fine one ply cotton has 1600 thread count, but those days with the latest modern machinery. Which are all CNC programming and computer programming, everything with that, we could reach up to 1600, which is supposed to be a very super fine cloth. But in those days, few thousand years back, we had a cloth which had a thread count up to 2425, and that was so manually manufactured. 
or manually weaved cloth and that basically is a said that the greatness or the quality consciousness of indian weavers lot of people have talked about it i mean there are a lot of testimonies on that we need not to really give each and every testimony but but there are a few which i certainly would like to quote on that there is a book from india to england professor james carer he is basically known in this field that uh, as, a, as, a, as a eminent uh, person who knows the textile industry in all so from india to england he wrote a book therein there is a chapter in this chapter the name is hindu skill the name of the chapter itself is hindu skill and the, uh, the, the the entire book name is cotton is a world power so cotton is a world power is a book out of which there are two major verticals or two major sections into it one is from india to england and in india to england there is a chapter name of chapter is hindu skill the book was written in 1916 by professor james carer and it is widely referred worldwide for the uh, you know understanding the textile and all i quote his word i quote professor james carer thousands of years before the invention of cotton machinery in europe hindu jeans were separating fiber from seed hindu wheels were spinning the lint into yarn and frail hindu looms weaving these yarns into textiles in page 19 he has written that unquote i mean the britishers themselves the foreign travelers themselves they have mentioned about this and not only in last 100 200 years but even prior to that when yuan song came to india that time it was uh, harshvardhan samrat harshvardhan's era was there he came he visited india in 7th uh, 7th century he visited india uh, his time du- uh, duration in india was 629 in the year 629 to 645 during this period he was in india and that time the he was king harsh harshvardhan he wrote that yuan song wrote that the indian cloth is so delicate that it's like a fork i mean from even from that time i mean uh, this this is not only 100 to 200 years back history it's basically quite old few, few thousand years old history that we had this this technology of manufacturing very super fine quality of uh, cloth jean tavernier is basically known for his uh, he is basically a trader he used to trade in the gems and because of in india uh, a lot of kings and uh, sultans and kings were there so he used to uh, visit india many times for this uh trading of the gems in 1660 in, in in the 17th century or the mid 17th century i should say that time india was ruled by this moguls and jahangir was the sultan or jahangir was the badshah of, of of india he wrote that there in lot of countries particularly persia and some other countries they used to keep their ambassador into the jahangir darbar he has mentioned in his book because he uh, wrote some kind of travel log this james uh, this, this jean uh, evernier there he had mentioned about an incident about of an ambassador from persia when this ambassador from persia who was posted in this uh, mughal king jahangir darbar when he went back to persia he took some something to uh, for his people including the sultan so he gave a, a coconut to his sultan and the other people were really surprised that ambassador coming from india is giving only a coconut to a sultan he requested sultan sultan of persia that please open it when he opened it the sultan was amazed he found that in this coconut 230 yards of muslin cloth was there malmal cloth 230 yards 230 yard cloth in a in a 
the coconut. So the Sultan was really amazed. That kind of quality of of of, of uh, fabric was manufactured or weaved in in India. Wilkinson's, who was working in the East India Company, he gave a uh, cloth to Sir Joseph Back, which I mentioned earlier, who counted the, actually uh, the, the, the threads in one uh, square uh, inch. So he basically uh, gave the cloth to Sir Joseph Back. Joseph Back has uh, mentioned about it. He said that. Five yards, seven inches cloth was there, which was given by Wilkinson to Sir Joseph Beck. And Sir Joseph Beck wrote that this five yards, seven inches cloth is weighted only 34.3 grains. Now, if we equate the grains with grams, this means that only two grams, not even two grams total. This means that. Five yards, seven inches cloth, weighted only two grams, and that kind of again I say that kind of quality of textile was there. A very interesting book, The Industrial Art of India. It was written by Sir George Birdwood. It also nice to read that. Therein he had written that sixteen gauge long. Gauge was basically a uh, yardstick of uh, measurement. So, 16 gauge long and one gauge wide muslin cloth weighted only one gram. So, I mean, like that, we could we could quote a hundred of I mean, number of examples about the quality of uh, cloths which uh, we used to manufacture earlier. Sir Edward Bass in 1835, in the year 18. He was in India. He was uh, editor, you know, journalist in those days. And then he became, when he went back to uh, UK, he became the member of parliament of UK also. Sir Edward Bains. In 1835, he wrote a book. The book name is History of Cotton Manufacturer. Therein, he has mentioned about uh, Indian uh, cloth making in a detailed manner. In a detailed manner. And he says that, I mean, a human being cannot make such kind of cloth. It's unbelievable. So super fine machineries even can't produce that. How a human being can make it? But yes, the fact was, the Indian weavers, the human beings, were manufacturing, were weaving this kind of uh, cloth. And that's why there was a craze worldwide, as I said earlier, from east to west, the entire globe, that Wearing any Indian cloth was a status symbol to that person, to that country, to that the community, and that's why that kind of uh, that kind of importance was there for the Indian textile. And that's the reason when Britishers came to India in 1608, 1608 they reached India in Surat. They understood the total. Uh, you know the dynamics of Indian trade, and they found that it is good if they could export the Indian-made textile to the Western world, particularly UK and other European countries. So for that, they started their sort of textile mill. It was not a mill; it was basically a kind of import-export uh, center in Machali Patnam, in the southern part of India. So in 1613. They started their first, they call it mill, but it was not mill. Again, I say it was basically a cloth collection or textile collection centers in Mashli Patnam. Those days, the textile manufacturing in India was not only centered to only few places, but was uh, across the uh, pan India. And, and, and the India is not that today is India, we are aware about it. That time, India was really the undivided India. So, Madurai, Patan, Madurai is the is, is is in the uh, south Patan is the Gujarat uh, Patan Gujarat was there Surat in Gujarat Mysore in Madhya Pradesh Varanasi and then uh, even then in parts of Sindh also there were some cotton manufacturers were there and Dhaka we all are aware the Bengal was basically known for that 
Dhaka Malmal. Dhaka Malmal was uh, very well known to the world. And uh, it was again the fine quality, the, you know, the uh, very low weight of that and the super fine quality of it made the Dhaka Malmal was one of the best cotton textile in the world or textile in the world. So, as I said, it was exported to uh, Turkey. Turkey was those days one of the major countries, then Egypt, the Italy, and Iran, and well, like that. In East, it, it was up to Japan, China, uh, Java, etc. In, however, when Britishers saw this, that the major chunk of Indian exports, the major chunk of Indian trade, was basically from the textile. And they could, they tried to make the textile in, uh, in, 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 in uh, UK. We all are aware about the Manchester. Manchester is known as for the textile manufacturing hub. But earlier, even they didn't have the proper technology. They tried to learn from, from, from India. But we must understand that that period when the Britishers have come to India, they start ruling. From 68, they, they came to India. 1757, they won the Plassey Battle. They started ruling part of India. It's Bengal. 1818, they uh, defeated the Maratha Empire. And except Punjab, most of the India was under their rule. This was the period wherein a lot of industrialization, revolution was going on in Europe. And probably most of the world. Unfortunately, as we were ruled by Britishers, we didn't have that kind of uh, experiments or doing that kind of industrialization. We were deprived, or rather, I should say, we were deprived of doing the industrialization, that revolution at that time. Therein, what they started doing, they started making some machines which are basically uh, run through the steam. So steam based machines, they tried to create to for the weaving purpose, so creating the textile, so making a textile industry in Manchester, as I said, that was one of the hub. But they understood that the quality of uh, any, any, any fabric which is manufactured in uh, Manchester or any part of that do not have, do not, can't, cannot match the quality of the Indian people. So manually, uh, we, uh, India textile was much, much better. The quality was, was, was much better. So what they did, there is an interesting book on this. The book is Consideration of Indian Affairs. This book was written in 1772. Now, 1772 was a period where, wherein uh, Britishers have just started ruling India. And that was also not the entire part of uh, the country. Only part of Bengal. As I said, 1757, they won the Battle of Plassey. 1765, they won the Battle of Buxar and almost the entire Bengal, that is today's West Bengal of India, Bangladesh, plus part of Bihar and Odisha, that, that consists the entire Bengal province. So it was very, I mean, they just started the ruling. It was just very initial years, initial stages of their ruling in India. What did it? This book. Consideration of Indian Affairs, which was written in 1772 by William Bolts, that gives the real picture how 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 Britishers were trying to stop or trying to destroy the Indian textile industry. In page 194, William Bolt writes that Britishers cut the thumb and fingers of skilled weavers. They literally did that. They identified the skilled weavers in Bengal, particularly Dhaka and the Murshidaba, uh, Dhaka and other parts of that. And therein, they cut their thumb and fingers so that they were not able, they, they will not be in a position to weave the, uh, this, this, this cloth. This was very unfortunate part. And they did many other measures. They took many other measures so that Indian textile industry must be almost destroyed. Stop. Close. Dhaka, which was, uh, you know, uh, those days was called Jahangir Nagar. 
ঢাকা ধরলে নেব জাহাঙ্গীর নাগর ইট ওয়াজ রিয়েলি ভেরি মেসলি পপুলেটেড ভেরি নাইস সিটি অ্যান্ড ইট ওয়াজ আলদি সিটি ইট ওয়াজ ভেলদি সিটি ঢাকা ওয়াজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য ভেলদি সিটিজ ইন দ্য কান্ট্রি অ্যান্ড দ্য ওয়েলথ ইউজ কাম বিকজ অফ দ্য টেক্সটাইল এক্সপোর্ট দ্যাট ওয়াজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য মেজার ইনকাম সোর্স unfortunately due to the majors came by the britishers the dhaka was devastated the industry was almost gone and through lack of population was there in dhaka in those days that came down to 50000 only of course with some other reasons with with some other measures dhaka became again uh, a more uh, live uh, city and then textile the legacy of textile industry was still very on later on today also there is a tech industry in dhaka but that's how the british are right to do so point here is that the kind of uh this this uh, tech industry which we do have britishers didn't want to have that so what did it prior to this classy battle 1757 from 168 to 1757 they traded the british traded with indian textile in a large number they used to uh, used to export it in a large number to european countries and they used to make a lot of money out of that because they already had their logistics and all worked out so more than 150 years from 1608 to 1757 almost 150 years they traded and they were paying in naturally they were paying in uh, british pounds so india was getting a kind of forex in those days and we all are aware that having the foreign currency even today or even those days had its own plus point but the moment they won this battle plus the battle they start ruling it they stop paying in british pound they started paying in the local currency which they used to get to their revenues and all so the advantage which uh, indian manufacturers textile manufacturers were having that that was gone second thing <laughs> they put a, a heavy duty if someone is importing the textiles in uk and not only uk the other countries where in the britishers were ruling like mauritius like canada and some other countries where in the <coughs> duty on textile was very heavy at the same time what they did any cloth which was which was manufactured in uk that duty in india was very less less than 5% wherein the indian textile used to attract a duty of more than 35 32 35% in britain and other uh, british rule countries so that was the disparity between the uh, duties for lot manufactured in britain and manufactured in india at the same time what they did that when the indian manufacturer manufacturers were planning to import some machines which were invented by this britishers and which were running on the steam and all there was a heavy duty on the machines which they uh, implied on if someone wants to import them for india so somehow britishers wanted to 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 really destroy this textile industry in india which had a very very uh very great kind of legacy a very rich past and that was one of the major force by which we say that india was a real wealthy country and india was the largest exporter worldwide for thousands of years they tried and they tried to do everything and that's why when britishers as a sentence when the uh, when when britishers came here that time the what are the export we we have or what are the trade share we have worldwide that was still around uh, 20 uh, 27% or something then it reached to uh, in the 1800 It, it it went up to 24% so even 27% or 24% more than one third of the export was from textile now scenario or situation 
when the Britishers have left India, the Indian share of the of the global trade that was reduced to less than three percent. So from the first century, wherein we have around one third of the market share worldwide, in the second century we had around uh, thirty plus market share worldwide. Even when Britishers came, we had twenty-seven and then twenty-four percent of market share. When the Britishers left, we had the market share was only less than three percent, two point eight percent to be precise. Out of which the textile export was less than three percent. So less than three percent of the two point eight percent. So you can imagine that when the Britishers left in that during that period, we had a very less. Share of the textile export worldwide. Of course, in last seventy years, our textile manufacturers have really uh, did some something. They did some new experiments on the textile. And today, we have fairly good uh, textile exports to the entire globe. And many places you might have seen that the Indian uh, made in India label is there. Even like Armani suit, which. Uh, We wear and we say that okay, it's a symbol. That Armani suit is manufactured probably maybe in Italy or some other countries, but Armani suit that 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 fabric, the textile, the cloth that made in India. So cloth is made in India, but actually in some 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 companies manufactured it in different places. So still we have this uh, uh, very rich kind of history of this uh, textile. And we wear a fancy who taught the world that how to wear a real cloth, what kind of fashion it means, and that's why today we turn around to Italy, to European, probably European countries. That what is the latest fashion in the world? Believe me, in two thousand years back, even prior to that, people used to look at India. And they used to say that what is the latest fashion which we do have, and Indians used to decide the latest fashion in the world in those days. So, just to conclude, let me say that the textile was basically introduced by Indians to the world when the technology was really not known to the country. We were the people who really had the technology, right? From the wooden spindle to the uh, you know making this very fine and super fine quality of the cloth and dyeing it, making it coloured and all that we used to do in thousands of years back. That's our past, that's our history, and that's our glorious past, I should say. And of course, this past is bringing us to a very glorious future if we consider that. Thank you very much for giving me this chance. You have any questions? Please. Uh, Uh, one question. Um, say, if you suggest, what would be your recommendation on the best book on this topic? Is it one book if people need to, as people want to read? So, what would be your recommendation on that? Okay, uh, best book is very difficult. I have, I have mentioned few books, but I suggest one thing. I have wrote a uh, book called Vinash Parvat. It's basically the British Raj uh, in India. And therein, this is the book Vinash Parva. Oh, this is the old card. Anyway, so Vinash Parva is the book. Therein, I gave the uh, references, the reference book. So quickly, I can say that what kind of books which generally one should uh, read. Uh, some of the this is the textile in ancient India. That is uh, Lalanji Gupta. That's what that is basically in the journal. Then our Oriental heritage. Uh, will do uh, durant. There, in some portion of it is there. I told you about the cotton as a world power, uh, study in the economic uh, interpretation of history. That's James uh, Scarer. It's one of the, I think, a good book on the textile, wherein he very clearly mentioned about the how uh, Indians used to do that. The history of cotton manufactures, Edward Baines. That also I have mentioned. Fabric of India. That I didn't mention, but that. That is also one of the major book by Rosemary Krill, story of Dhaka uh, Muslim, and some lot of books are there. Fifteen uh, books I have referred uh, in my 
this this reference list in the vinash parva and i i am really difficult to uh, tell you that uh, which is the, the best book among them but i two or three books which i have mentioned you can refer them they give the clear picture of indian tech right yeah okay sir i have a question uh, sir uh, due to the emergence of the uh, demand of hybrid cotton and like yellow seed cotton in the foreign market do you think that our quality of original cotton which is mainly meant for the hot hot weather of india is getting compromised and threat for our industry yeah you are i mean okay you uh, you you i mean i think your reference is with the, like uh, bb cotton and pakistan i mean all those that basically you are basically the thing right the hybrid uh, hybrid cotton seeds and all yeah personally if you ask me the indian quality was because of the original indian cotton and original indian cotton has a really very rich kind of uh, uh, quality we are aware that uh, in the 18th century and 19th century the earlier 19th century americans have started manufacturing or rather uh, having this uh, cotton so there was american cotton and there was indian cotton there was a comparison between american cotton and indian even today america has some uh, cotton belt but the american cotton is not considered as the best cotton in the world the best cotton in the world is from india that everyone has accepted and when we already have the best cotton in the world why we should do the you know make this hybrid and all I, personally i don't understand. i am not really as i said that i am not a agriculturist i am not a uh, scientist in the agriculture so i probably may not able to comment uh, rightly on this but this is my general uh, perception which says that if we have very good quality and world has accepted it why should we do it hybrid that's my view on that as we have date for presence of cotton dated around 6th millennium bce do you feel sir this emergence of cotton textile was Uh, was came through woolen threads, especially pastoral communities who used to move with their gaze, uh, grazing animals like sheep and goats. Ah, uh, okay. The Western world, uh, which was uh, having that kind of climate, they were having the uh, woolen cloth actually. But let's understand one thing. Worldwide, even where in the that kind of climate was there woolen cloth have limitation about the quality and about other things so i do not think that indians have got that idea from the woolen cloth absolutely not because they are totally different in that nature right from the as i said that right from the rugveda and this uh, you know after lot of books are there even the kautilya has mentioned in this chanakya niti in, in this arthaniti this uh, kautilya's arthaniti there are how to you know about the cotton trade he is mentioned about that point here is that it is originally indian mind indian thinking how uh, to create a you know thread from the cotton seeds and uh, how to weave them that how we invented all this windows and and other thing and we have created the best quality cotton in the world there is no uh, way we can say that it was just because of copied uh, from the western world who had some woolen cloth one thing those woolen cloth were only just for the basic wear necessity even if we refer the earlier cloth uh, or uh, extra industry uh, was there with the Woolen. We will find that they didn't have the different varieties, different coloring, these and that not made, which only Indians had. So I do believe that Indians had the originality about the cloth manufacturing, about the textile industry. Okay, uh, sir. So she has another question. As yeah. now we know that India had knowledge of tussar silk starting from the Harappan period. Uh, yes. We should at least stop using the term silk route. She had asked. Uh, so we, again uh, uh, we should, should do the explore uh, should, the silk route uh, should we stop using the term silk route uh, uh, as I mean, we should be using the term silk route. i i i fully agree with her i agree with her that silk route and all as i said that these are the concept basically somehow imposed by this 
Britishers and that made us as a colonized mind. We have to decolonize ourselves. And I fully agree with her that we shouldn't use the Silk Route at all because prior to Silk Route, she is rightly mentioned. And I forgot to mention that, that in the Harappa and uh, I mentioned on the Baron, but 5,000, 6,000 years back, I mean, before that, this uh, Harappa and Mohan Jodaro had the samples of cloth. And so, naturally, uh, the, you know, I mean, uh, yes, I, I agree with her that we had a very long uh, kind of tradition of uh, this textile. So, we shouldn't talk about this thing because we have created it. I agree with you. Sir, I have a question. In Gujarat, there is a yeah. particularly in Kutch region, we have a very rich tradition of embroidery work and the uh, whole embroidery work is basically based on this ship and boats uh, threads. So uh -huh. the, uh, my question was about woolen, uh, idea of woolen cloth and all. It was not with the Western perspective, but in India, we have lots of regional variation regarding the climate. Right. So it was not that from west this wool, okay. these woolen cloths are coming from, but the idea that in especially in the region of Kutch in Gujarat, which was a melting pot for yeah. different businessmen coming from Sindh area, Balochistan area, even from China and uh, down south. So do yes. you feel that these regional varieties has given or regional variation, climatic variation has given this opportunity to having lots of variety of textile in India? Yeah, I agree with you. That generally what, what happens when uh, these kind of uh, various uh, kind of cultures or, uh, uh, you know, cultures come at some place, Naturally, there are the exchanges of, of ideas and uh, exchanges of these kind of things do happen. So, yes, uh, in that Indian perspective, we see that probably uh, whatever we had with the ships and all, with the clothes uh, we might have created and that might have probably gone to the best. That conclusion we may have because, as I said, that wherever in any history, if we see that, and clothing and textile, if you see that, the earlier references are with only India. So, this concept might have gone from India to the West, that we can say, yes. That fusion kind of uh, is always there, fusion of uh, this culture, fusion of the fashion, fusion of technology, always do happen. So, that might have happened in the Kachya and that part of the Gujarat, wherein others, I mean, all, all these cultures do meet. So, yes, it might have happened. Sir, uh, one more thing I wanted to add that you yeah. uh, you talked about this site of Berenike at Berenike, the yeah. uh, Red Sea coast. So from yeah. that site, we have at least 40 kgs of black pepper, which is uh, we are getting from a container. Like it was yes. a jar, right? So you mentioned about this wooden basket. So I thought uh, I should uh, mention that it, it was not a wooden basket, but it was a complete jar. From which, which we have got 40 kg uh, black pepper. Yeah, black pepper. Okay, it was not wooden. Yeah. So, what I mean to say is that with that, they also found a wooden basket wherein that, uh, uh, what can I say, that Indian boutique print cloth was there. So, yes, I agree that naturally this uh, uh, might have been the that container. And with that, some wooden boxes, it, uh, it was found that uh, you, you'll also go and uh, Google, you'll find that photograph of that small wooden box which has this Indian books of things also. So even, even for this ship making also they use these cotton cloth. Uh, yes. Which is coming from Indian uh, subcontinental Red Sea coast. You are right. Uh, there is an interesting book on uh, Indian ship building, Radha Kumut Mukherjee. That book has uh, very nicely described about in the writing said that, that uh, cloth uh, is also used in a uh, you know, in a uh, kind of a, in a sea environment and sea atmosphere, how cloth could be used in the uh, ship building. That uh, it was very well mentioned in the book, India Ship Building by Kum, uh, Radha Kumut Mukherjee. So, yes, it was there. India Ship Building was one of the, again, as, as I said, that for export of uh, the goods, ships used to uh, build in India and then they used to be exported to the various countries. We used to sell the ships. 
sir one more last question i have in my mind uh, that is related to these mural paintings like in ajanta elora we have several mural paintings which is uh, depicting our rich textile so do you feel that we should revitalize our uh, textile understanding of these textile industry through uh, going back to the past and uh, retracing the origin of these uh, mural paintings especially because in uh, ajanta we have some sort of hierarchy like kis yes. aadmi ko kis type ka kapda pehenna hai that is also mentioned very beautiful yes. raja ka dress kaisa hoga jo artisans hai unka dress kaisa hoga the whole hierarchy is there regarding the cloth who should wear which kind of cloth true very true unfortunately you know what what happened we had seen everything in the colonized mind that is our problem I, i i always quote one thing that uh, you know we should be proud of our own uh, clothing the part of clothing we, we do have and i quote one example when i went to uh, island long back around 20 25 years back in bangkok i uh, i i went to a seminar and uh, we stay in a seven star hotel it was very large hotel seven star hotel there when uh, i was going into the i did the check in and a bell boy came and he was taking my luggage to my room that bell boy was wearing a dhoti a reshim dhoti you know the yellow reshim dhoti that was his dress and then on that sort of uh, jacket kind of thing coat i asked him i said what is this he very proudly said that this is our national dress now imagine that a person in india is wearing a dhoti and going into a five star hotel and what kind of uh, you know people look into him at at at, at what uh, kind of angle what here is that we should have a proud of our own clothing proud of our own history and we should have decolonized mind that's basically the requirement of an hour today everything whatever we see and i really i feel pity about uh, the small children even in a village children i found that in such an indian environment indian atmosphere wherein a lot of heat is there the small children we are trying and not only this convent normal small children you know uh, in, in, in normal schools they also wear a tie now why because they feel that wearing a tie is basically some some kind of status that's a colonized mind that need to be washed out we should have the decolonized mind and as you rightly said in that perspective if we look into our history then we will have uh, the entire totally different uh, perspective in the entire uh, this fashion industry yes uh, sir continuing from the last answer you have given i have seen that wearing a tie in summer is comfortable for us but while wearing a dhoti many of us think that it is not easy and comfortable to wear a dhoti and it is bad like that sir i have a question uh, that uh, at what time in the history did the uh, idea of uh, stitched clothes originate in india stitched clothes yes sir well uh, totally arthashastra also is talking about the stitch clothes even prior to that as i said that uh, we already have now totally i mean this chanakya uh, somewhere around uh, 2500 years back even prior to that no up uh, i mean that's that's what the we 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 have the references from 2500 years or 3000 years back but prior to that whatever we generally we call it mythology it's not mythology it is basically uh, actually things happened like ramayana mahabharata it was our history even that we have seen that there is stitch close where there so that teaching is a kind of tradition in india long back uh sir you mentioned about spinning wheel sir i know that indians invented the spindle uh, actually it came from india sir uh, also the spinning wheel also came from india yes spinning wheel came from india uh, sir uh, came from india many people have said that this came. sir uh, uh, we have seen that uh, indian women follow their traditions more than indian women with indian men uh, when it comes to clothing sir what is your take on this that women always follow their traditions more like they wear sarees 
yes i agree with you that that that, that traditions from i mean women do uh, follow the traditions but again as i said that if very strongly this kind of decolonization is coming to even them men and women both they again go back into that very rich tradition we still we do not follow now many uh, women wear uh, sarees in the very you know old kind of tradition like in marathi we used to have the paithani and the old kind of that uh, nine gut uh, saree and all they wear it but again as i said that it is basically if that could even a kind of a status a kind of a respect as yes wearing such kind of traditional dress is a respect then more people will follow this i am not against any you know any dress sense of 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 anyone people can just wear as per their comfort my point is only that whether we are really proud of our own culture or not that's very simple question if we are proud of our own heritage <laughs> proud of our own culture and 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 sometime if i wear dhoti and all uh, i should have proud about that nothing wrong in that sir i was just researching and i came across uh, i uh, i an information that sir what is your uh, take on the connection between textile industry and philosophical philosophic schools of ancient india like we find uh, guna which refers to attributes means a single thread while terms like tantra sutra prabandha etc all have textile terminology roots actually they were connected this philosophy and the textile industry was somehow okay as i said that indian tradition indian culture is always a kind of spiritual so when we say spiritual it basically having the relationship with the tradition so with every not only this industry if you go to any industry not in textile but any other thing you go we have somehow some relationship with the spirituality of it and that's basically the beauty of 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 indian culture so yes it is uh, some kind of relationship is there you could uh, i mean we could establish with that uh sir uh, in our ancient titles we definitely see human figures and deities wearing those uttariya and antariya like uh, things and sir i just wanted to know when uh, steeped cloth was not there in india so what was the way of clothing for the people li- living in the snowy cold weather of ancient india so this is just my curiosity what was their clothing style uh, again cold, when the uh, in, in the cold weather what was their clothing style when steeped clothes were not there okay uh there a lot of uh, literature on on to that we have even the cotton you know uh generally if uh, when a uh, lot of uh, cold is there during the winter season what kind of uh, thing we we have we used to have rzai and and other thing correct which has cotton in between in between the cloth cotton there is a normal cotton correct in between the cloth and that resists the cold that's basically the simple technique so earlier the people used to wear during the uh, during this winter season the cloth wherein the cotton was in between middle of that cotton was there and that make them you know proper comfortable so we had that kind of a uh, uh, kind of a clothing even for different kind of uh, uh, for atmosphere or that weather because we have different weather zones even in i'm talking about the undivided india which has a very different kind of uh, weather zone so yes we did have that Oh, sir i was coming across a video and there i found uh, uh, sir is there any truth in the fact that uh, british had no choice but to trade in textiles as the kach had already dominated the space, spice trade actually uh, actually britishers had no other choice but to ta- trade in textiles is, 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 is it a fact or no it see choice means basically there are two things which everyone wanted to have to trade in india One was spices, other was the textile. Now, spices market was already with the others, and uh, Britishers came uh, late. 
we are aware that earlier the portuguese came then the dutch came of course dutch could uh, stay here I and mean, uh, survive here rather raja markand over my successively defeated dutch british came almost 100 years afterwards so that time most of the um, uh, this uh, spice trend and all was with this abusarna is dutch and this i mean portuguese and dutch naturally british has started with textile because textile was under chunk of the major trade and wherein they could get the money easily and they got the money rather by trading the textile so yes initially they started textile that way they didn't have the choice and more than that it was lucrative and then slowly they got the their hand on the spices uh, also but initially they started with the textile that's good